Maybe silence all cell phone and electronic devices, please. My name is Vidor Nicholas. I'll be the moderator for this morning's class. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a non-profit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year of 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year of 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. This Tampa brand was established in 1996. At this time, I would like to introduce to you the Dean of the Tampa Branch, Dr. Joe Turner, President, Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word of Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by the Lord. The true title of the Word of Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. We now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title. Unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is a title that our Creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any character or letters in their alphabet that can produce the sound that is made with this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the truth and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in His state He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose the cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within a cloud. In like manner, everything in a universe abides within a pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word of son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine vision and understood in divine revelation. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in the physical body and walked the earth plate as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should all ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name in title may be had by reading the preference of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It's called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai, showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consists of 
a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this school, we have 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives that they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the power of the man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Six, seven, is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon. Satan and his demons operate in the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Eight is to earnestly contend for the common salvation in faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Night is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Ten, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in a new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. We have Claire dedicated prayer by Dr. Nancy Little. We have a music selection by Dr. Lisa Zizi and Dr. Jennifer Marshall. Uh, our scripture lesson is Psalms, the 19th Division, will be read by Dr. Lisa Zizi. Our scripture readers are Dr. Lisa Zizi and Dr. Cynthia Smith. I can start by telling you I have an angel with me and that's my dog because that's her name. <laughs> so um, if we would all bow our heads and our hearts and open ourselves to what Yahshua and Yahweh have in mind for us and uh, whatever we say or however we act and whatever we do, if we put that first and primary and realize that nothing we do is on our own as long as we have that faith. I would ask that we pray for those who are in harm's way or who may be crying out and that somehow they are, their hearts are, are turned to you, both Yahshua and Yahweh, and that that is what we're here for and that is why things that are happening are happening. It's all part of the plan. So I ask these things and I say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, there you are. Another original song written by Julie mm -hmm. Turner.
Psalms, the 19th chapter. The heavens declare the glory of Elohim, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night shows knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of Yahweh are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahweh is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahweh is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of Yahweh are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. 
Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Yahweh, my strength and my Redeemer. Psalms, the 19th chapter. All right, good morning again, Claire. Uh, I would like for Claire to acknowledge our first time visitor, uh, uh, William Wallace, guest of Dr. McGill Safani. Will our class please acknowledge our first time visitor, please? All right, as is, if you have any questions after class, uh, for any of the speakers, I mean, please address them after class. Uh, our first time, I mean, our first speaker for this morning will be Dr. Cynthia Smith. Good morning. As always, it's a pleasure to be amongst the brethren and have anything to say about our Heavenly Father. And to our first time visitor, we do welcome you. And we welcome you with open arms and in sincerity and in truth, right? And what you see up here, as the moderator indicated, this is the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, right? This is a school. And we do separate ourselves as being a school and not a church. And we're not affiliated with any other religious organization. And so when you look at the title of the Institute, it's metaphysical means beyond the flesh. So we're going to be talking or concentrating on things that are beyond the flesh. And meaning your Heavenly Father. You know, because that's what we all want to know, right? Or hopefully that's what we all want to know. Something about our Creator as He really is and actually exists. Well, let's get the first aim, please. Because in this institute, we have aims or goals. Just like in your life, you may have goals to reach a certain end point. And so these aims are set up for us to reach a certain end point, which in reality is not really an end point. It's really a beginning. Go ahead. A first aim to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Right. And so that aim is for us to help you find and know. And see, you may say, well, I do know something about God. You know, first of all, if you say I do know something about God, that's telling me you really don't know. Right? Because God is a title. God is not his name. Right? And just like the moderator went through these names, God is just a title. Lord is a title. Right? And so we're going to get into that. But what I want to say, first of all, is that this teaching is not from a man. It's from our Heavenly Father. Now, to some people that may sound kind of weird or crazy or whatever. Because, see, we're physical creatures, and we're so used to seeing someone physical being represented in everything in this earth plane, right? And saying that this is the teaching directly from the Creator Himself, it's like, okay. You know, and, you know, we used to say, that now I was I was raised Baptist, right? And I remember in the church you always had a big huge picture of the pastor. Right? Yeah. And but we always say that you're not gonna find a picture of our founder here. Now obviously this is not our classroom. We don't 
own this classroom. We're just renting this space, mm -hmm. right? But if we did have a permanent building that we actually own, you still would not see a picture of the founder hanging up in the on the wall. Right, because we're not following, we're not promoting that this teaching is a, from a man. We're promoting that this teaching became, came from a divine vision and revelation. And our founder, Henry Clifford Kinley, is the man that had that vision. And what he said was, he said, make me prove it until you're satisfied, right? To your satisfaction. Now, when I was out in the church world, Number one, we didn't carry Bibles to church, right? And when you went to church, there was no Bibles there. On the back of the pews, they had those hymn books, right? It was all the songs. Mm -hmm. We never had a Bible. So when the minister was up doing his sermon, he could have been saying anything. You know, I can remember him saying, I'm coming to you from Isaiah such and such. Now we had no, and we couldn't follow along because we didn't have a Bible. So you didn't really know if what he was saying was the truth, right? And see, our slogan is speak the truth, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is what we want you to fall in love with. We want you to fall in love with the truth. And so that's why the first aim is to help you finally know your God as he really is and actually exists, right? Because see, when we came, we were out there in the church world, our concept of God was distorted. Because first of all, it came from information that was not true. It came from information that was passed down from generation to generation to generation. And nothing against your grandmother, great-grandmother, grandfather, whatever. We all been there. We all had our first time coming into one of these classes, right? And so, when you look at what's out in the world, I'm just going to say it like this. If you don't know his name, then there's nothing else you can know about him that is correct. Right? And so, because when you meet someone for the first time and they give you their name, they give you a false name, that means they don't want to have nothing to do with you. Right? Or that means anything else you find out about them is not going to be correct. And so, yes, you had your concepts and opinions coming into this class, or coming into the, I'll say, the body of Yahshua. Because it's not about a physical classroom, right? You know, we have come to the conclusion that Yahweh doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. And so we collectively, we're the body of Yahshua and the Messiah. So when you're in this body, see the concepts and opinions that you had before, you come to realize that it was wrong. Everything you thought about your creator was wrong. Okay, so let's go to... Um, Let's get, let's go to um, John 1 and 1. Okay. And going back to, hold that for a second, going back to the founder when he had the vision and revelation. You know, and there's a whole backstory on that, and I'm not going to really get into it because that's not the point of it. You know, like he said, make me prove it until you're satisfied. So we have realized that we have been satisfied to the point where we keep coming back, right? And what we want you to do is just consider, consider what is being said. Right? You don't have to believe it, but do some investigation and check it out for yourself. Because your soul salvation is at stake. And see, I just bought a new car, right? Uh, like a month ago. No, not Uber, because <laughs> girl, them payments, no. <laughs> but when I went to the dealership, I test drove the car. Right? Mm -hmm. I asked the dealership all kind of questions. You test drive the car, you kick the tires, whatever. Mm -hmm. Look under the hood, whatever. Right? Mm -hmm. But when it comes to your salvation, your soul, you just want to believe someone because they sound good. 
See, we were used to that. Believe in someone just because, oh, that sounds right. Have you been, have you ever been wrong, sincerely wrong with something sounds right and then you find out that it was not right? Mm -hmm. Right? And so you don't want to just believe someone because it sounds right mm -hmm. or you um, respect them or you know someone standing up here dressed all nice or or with the collar on or whatever you want to take charge of your own soul salvation and prove it for yourself so now let's go to um, okay now what you see here is part of the vision that our founder had. And see, not only did he have a vision, but he had a revelation to go with that vision. Get to me, um, Proverbs 29 and 18, and then I want also Habakkuk 2 and 1. Um, all that Proverbs? Mm -hmm. Yes. That one, that one first. Yes, okay. please. Huh. Proverbs 29 Proverbs 29 and 18 mm -hmm. Where there is no vision The people perish Okay so it should be where there's no prophetic vision The people will perish Because see you need a vision That's going to give you some information Right So just imagine you have the television on And on the television You see this nice big juicy burger and you're like, oh man, I am so hungry. That looks so good. I think I'm going to go down to this place and get one. But see, without the, without the volume up, you don't understand that they're saying, do not go buy this. <laughs> it's poisonous. Do not eat this. Right? And so you go down there and you get one. So that means you had a vision, but you didn't have the revelation to go with it. So it's not just good for someone to come to you and say, I had a vision. We all have visions. You watch television, right? We all have visions. But you need someone to have, a, to have had a revelation in order to do something for your soul. And so what you see here on these charts is charts is a pictorial illustration of the vision that our founder had. And so you will see that it's different parts. Like this is the the creator image by the creation. See these are I mean you can kind of recognize some of the stuff that's on the chart. You have the cell, the you have the butterfly, you have the man, the solar system. You know, you so you see different things represented on this chart. This is the tabernacle mm -hmm. compared to man or man made in the image of Elohim by the pattern of the tabernacle. Okay? This is the tabernacle pattern. This is your physical body. Okay? And so this is called our Moses chart. Mm -hmm. And you will see here you have Moses. Now this is something that you can recognize that is actually in the Bible. And then this, this chart down here is called the elementary chart. And you have the different events that happen in the Bible. And then this is the chart. Um, well, I'll just say the Yahshua chart. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so this is a pictorial illustration of the vision that was actually given to our founder. Now, this is not the vision in totality. See, this is just part of it. Because of all the things that he saw, it couldn't be contained in this room, right? And so this is just something for us to, another way for us to learn because we all learn differently. Some people learn by doing. Some people learn by seeing. Some people learn by just hearing, right? And so we have every basis covered. Now get Rebecca, please. Becca to let me start at one. Yeah, you can start at one. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer and, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Mm -hmm. And 
Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables. Okay, so he said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables. Go ahead. That he may run that readeth it. Okay, and so we call these charts as it were tables, mm -hmm. right? Because from the table you eat. Mm -hmm. And see, we're not feeding you physical food, but it's spiritual food, food for your soul. Right? Something that's going to sustain your soul in this creation. Okay. I want you to hold um, John 1 and 1. <clears throat> well, let's just read it. Okay. And I want you to still use God. Okay. And okay. Go ahead. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. No. Did you say John 1 and 1? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay. So, in your Bible, you have several beginnings. And so, when you read something, see, by this being a school, we are taught to ask the questions as you're reading. So, when it says, in the beginning, in what beginning? Right? Mm -hmm. And so, see, this is the beginning of the creation. And so, you see, you'll find that when you go to um, Genesis, Genesis mm -hmm. it'll say, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And see, that's a different in the beginning than this in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, all of that... You know, see, I had one person told me, <clears throat> when I used to invite this person to class, they would tell me, oh, I have to study some more be before I come down there. <laughs> yeah. See, you don't have to... S <sighs> You're never going to study up enough <sighs> without the inspiration of the Holy Spirit you just don't have to do that right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying it's not that you have to study up to come and learn something about your creator because see you're not gonna well you will be tested but it's not I'm not giving you a physical test mm -hmm. it's a spiritual test mm -hmm. yeah. right mm -hmm. everything is a test mm -hmm. When you go into the store, you say you want to die and you see that chocolate cake. That's a test. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, that's just a silly e Testing a ex <laughs> example. But, you know, everything is a test. But it's not that you have to study up on your creator to come and learn something about him. Mm -hmm. Right? Because, see, a school is to educate you on something you didn't know. Mm -hmm. Right? And see, this is the school of the highest learning. There's no graduation. Well, I guess you can say there is, but it's not that there's an end. There's no end, right? Okay, go ahead. We're in John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay, so it says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now see, when those ministers and they still do it till this day. Mm -hmm. On TV, I see them. I'm coming to you from the Word of God. Mm -hmm. See, this Bible is not the Word of God, right? And so I am jumping ahead of myself, so let me just back up for a moment. <clears throat> Yahweh means He who causes to exist. Your very existence is because of your Creator. See, he is the creator, we are the creation. You breathe his name. Yahweh, Yahweh. Right? Now you just go in the closet and just listen to yourself breathe. Or in a quiet room, just listen to yourself breathe. You breathe the name of Yahweh. Yahweh causes us to exist. This is the name of your creator. Now go... Um, hold that, but I'm going to come back to that. Let's just go over to um, Exodus. Mm -hmm. uh, the third chapter? Now, Yahweh 
you can hear it, you hear it now out there in the world. At one point, when I first came into class, I've been in class for, I don't know, 20 something years. And you didn't really hear it that much. But now you can hear it. You hear it. And so just being able to say Yahweh, see, you have to understand what that name means. It has to take on a meaning for you. You know, so just because they say it out there in the church world, that doesn't mean that they have any type of understanding about what this name does. Right? right? And so we're going to show you what this name, the significance of this name. Go ahead. Where do you want to start out? Okay, so before Yahweh's name was known, they were calling him what? Adonai? El Shaddai. El Shaddai. Right? El Shaddai. Let's go go um go ahead and get that for me. It's where they call them? No, no, no. Exodus three. Okay. Yeah. Where do you want to start? Just three and one? Um No, I'm just gonna pick it up. I'm just gonna go through it and then you can pick it up at like three and thirteen or something like okay. that. Okay. Okay, so this chart here is called the Moses chart. So you see here you have the children of Israel down here in bondage unto in the land of Egypt, right? And so they were in under bondage unto Pharaoh. They were crying to be delivered, mm -hmm. all right? And so one down here born was called Moses. Now Moses was a goodly child, right? Let's just pick up, pick up a little bit of that. Okay, so that would be... Where he was a good child. Three and one. Beginning, two. beginning of two. Two. Two, yeah. Two, yeah. Ahead, yep. yeah okay, know. we're in Exodus two and one. Mm -hmm. And there went a man of the house of Levi and mm -hmm. took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. Okay, so when they said that Moses was a goodly child, that means that Moses was born with the Holy Spirit, right? And so at this particular time, Pharaoh had put out a death decree to kill the Hebrew male children, right, when they were born. Because the Egyptians down here in the land of Egypt, they were not bearing children as fast as the Israelites. And when I say Israelites, that means the, um, the Jews, Israelites, or the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Same same people mm -hmm. right and so the children of Israel or the Jews they were bearing children a lot faster and so when Pharaoh saw that they were multiplying at such a great rate he feared for his throne and what he feared was that one day they would team up with an enemy nation and overthrow him mm -hmm. right and so he put out this death decree for two midwives to go in and kill the male babies when they were born but the female babies they were supposed to let live okay and so during this particular time this is when Moses is born now, I'm sure everyone in here may have seen that movie, The Ten Commandments, right? By Cecil B. DeMille. Now, that movie is not accurate. But it kind of paints the picture, you know what I'm, you kind of have a pinpoint of what I'm talking about here. And so Moses being born down here in the land of Egypt. And so once Moses get of age, he realized, well... Okay, so when Moses' mother saw that he was a goodly child, mm -hmm. she hid him, and when she could no longer hide him, mm -hmm. she put him in an ark and put him in the river Nile, right? And so Pharaoh's daughter, see, the river Nile was a river of fertility. Pharaoh's daughter was bathing in the river because she desired to have a child. And so she sees this ark, she sends her handmaiden to go and fetch it. And she sees, when they opens it, Moses is in it, right? And so she draws him out. And incidentally, Moses' name means to draw out. And so when she takes that child, she raises him as her own. And so Moses is raised, a Jew or a Hebrew is raised in the household of Pharaoh, right? He's raised as a prince with all the abilities as everyone else in the household. Mm -hmm. 
So Moses, because of the law of circumcision, not like Sesame the Mill indicates because it's a piece of cloth. It's the law of circumcision that Moses realized as he, that he's Hebrew. And so he wants to go among his brethren. Right? And so when he goes out one day, he sees a Hebrew... Um, he sees an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, right? And so he intervenes and he is, ends up killing the Egyptian. And when he killed the Egyptian, he buries the Egyptian in the sand. You know, because killing or who he killed was death. And so Moses goes out another day and he sees two of his own brethren fighting. And when he intervenes, he said, the one who was in the wrong said, what, you going to kill me like you killed the Egyptian the day before? Mm -hmm. And so Moses knows that the word is out that he killed someone. So he flees. And he flees. And let's pick that up into um, three and one. Oh, okay. Yep, yep, I got it. Uh, Exodus 3, 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. Okay, and so this is when Moses flees up out of the land of Egypt because he's a wanted man, right? Mm -hmm. And so he comes into the backside here. What, go Read that first part again. Uh, Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. Mm -hmm. He led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. Okay, and so Moses is tending, <coughs> tending flock. And, you know, there's another story behind that, but we're not going to really get into it because it's not really about Moses. It's just setting up you have an idea as to why Moses was chosen, mm -hmm. right? And so we don't want to just jump and say, Moses is seeing this. You want to have some kind of backstory about who Moses actually is mm -hmm. for understanding sake. Okay, so keep going. 3, 2, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. Okay, so now Moses is on the back... Moses is right here tending flock, right? And he sees this phenomenal sight. He sees this bush burning, but it's not being consumed. And you have several, I don't want to say people, oh. but voices or voices no, well, no. or imp several titles. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have several <laughs> okay I'll say entities for the sake of understanding talking to Moses you know because first it said what did it say it says the angel the angel the Lord, the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire and then it didn't it say God before that um, no but later on it says that that in four it says God called him Okay, and so you have all of these people, for sake of understanding, talking to Moses in this bush, okay? And so, but Moses is seeing this phenomenal sight. A bush is, being, a bush is on fire, but it's not being consumed, right? Okay, go ahead. The angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Mm-hmm. Three, and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burned? Okay, and you know, like I said, when you're reading, you have to also ask yourself questions. And see, when it says Moses turned aside, now see, ordinarily reading that, I probably would have just read over it. Mm -hmm. But see, now that I have an understanding, when he said turned aside, that means he turned aside from his own concepts and opinions, right? Because you have to turn aside when you see a bush on fire and it's not being consumed, right? So Moses is having a vision. He's having a vision. And so he has to turn aside from his own concepts and opinions. Go ahead. For and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. Oh, that's a busy bush, right? <laughs> Go ahead. And said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. Okay. 
And he said, Draw not nigh thither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou stands is holy ground. Okay, so at this time Moses is commissioned to go back down into the land of Egypt and tell the and tell Pharaoh that no, I'm I'm getting ahead of myself. Keep going. Six. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Okay, so I want you to skip down. Cry of Israel has come up unto me, or further, Moses well, said unto God. Moses is going to be commissioned to go back down into Egypt and to tell Pharaoh that God said to let his people go. Okay. Get to that part. 13. And Moses... 13? Yes. Yeah. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me... What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Now, what version of the Bible are you reading from? I'm a King James Version. Right. This is a holy name. This one is a King James. And so, see, Institute of Divine Metaphysical did not print that Bible. Right. No. And so, that has been in that Bible since forever mm -hmm. right <laughs> when Moses said to God what is your name what shall I say unto them yeah mm -hmm. now Moses asked God a question what is your name and see Moses had after all since Moses was born Moses was raised down here in the land of Egypt you know, and the children of Israel was down here under bondage for some, what, 200, 400 years. They took on the customs of the people down here in the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And so, see, Moses had enough sense to know that the people down here in Egypt were called a polytheistic nation, which means that they had a God for everything. They worshiped many gods. Okay, like I said before, the river now is a god. They had a sun god. They had a moon god. They had a frog god. They had a god for this. They had a god for that, right? And so Moses didn't want to go down here and sound like a fool and say, God sent me. Because they're going to say, well, what God sent you? So that should tell you that God is not a name. And just because you capitalize it doesn't make it a name, right? It doesn't make it a name. And so when Moses go down to the land of Egypt, he wants to be equipped with a name, right? Keep going. Mm -hmm. 14, and God said to, unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto okay, you. Okay, I am that I am. You know, that's something else that's incorrect. And, you know, we can get into that later, but that's not my point that I'm going for right now. Go ahead. 15. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers. Okay, so when she reads right there, that Yahweh tells, or God tells Moses, Yahweh, mm -hmm. I'm the God of your fathers, mm -hmm. the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, right? Because see, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were their four forefathers. Just like what we have Abraham Lincoln, you know, Washington, mm -hmm. blah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yeah. And so the four fathers and so that's specifically indicating to Moses the God that he's talking about right and so Yahweh gives Moses his name at this point mm -hmm. and then he goes on to say this is my name forever yeah and this is my memorial unto all generations now has is forever over mm -hmm. No, forever is still going on. And so Yahweh, this is his name. And see, some people want to say it doesn't matter what you call him. Well, if it doesn't matter, then why don't you just call him Yahweh? That's right. <laughs> you know, or that's his old Hebrew name. But what's your old Hebrew name? See, this is his name. And he said, this is my name forever. And so not to change it because you have a paycheck, right? For those of, those of you who work, 
you get a paycheck. Now you don't want somebody else's name on your check, right? No. 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 Is it good for you? The check is not good for you if somebody else's name is on it because you can't go and say, oh well, they put the wrong name on the check. No, the bank doesn't want to hear that. You have to have the proper name, right? And so see, when it comes to your creator, we want to say that a name doesn't matter. But when it comes to you, your name does matter. You know, because let someone mispronounce your name. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. You know, I get people spell my name with an S all the time. It's C, not S. <laughs> you, you understand what I'm saying? A name is important. Mm -hmm. Because just imagine, how would you get anywhere if you didn't have street names, right? I mean, I... I marvel, because I like watching westerns, and I marvel how they get around. <laughs> because there's no streets. <laughs> okay, so how do you know where... <laughs> okay, go to Mabel's house. Okay, where is it? <laughs> right? I mean, I know they had different language back then, you know, to travel and find these different spots, but we today would just be completely lost. Mm -hmm. And so a name is important because Yahweh means he who causes to exist. Okay, so now let's go back to... Um, Do you want me to read that verse? Over? Or no? no. Okay. I want you to go back to... John? Yes. Okay. Now we're in John. And I guess I better hurry up. Okay, John 1 and 1. <laughs> yes. John 1 and 1. Um, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, God. and the Word... Well, you can say Yahweh because we've already revealed the name, okay, so you right. can... In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh. Okay, so as I stated to you before, those ministers that get on TV and say, I'm coming to you from the Word of God... That is not true. That is not what this scripture is talking about. See, these are words in a Bible. Yeah. Or you can say words of God. But this is not the word. Mm -hmm. See, the word is this Elohistic form here, as the moderator mentioned. Yahweh is in pure spirit. And see, we have no senses that can detect spirit because we are physical beings. We can't see spirit. We can't taste it, touch it, hear it, taste it. We have no senses to detect spirit. And so what Yahweh did from his pure spirit state, he took on shape and form right within himself as Elohim. And this is the word. And we call it the word or son, right? But this is the word that is referred to in John 1 and 1, right? Because it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. And so when you understand Yahweh, how he set up, and see, that does take some more understanding to understand the Godhead of your creator. But Yahweh took on shape and form as this word. Now this word was only seen in visions. It wasn't something physical that was walking around. Get for me um, Exodus 24. No. Nine. Yeah, you know which one I want. <laughs> yeah. Exodus 24 and 9. Yeah. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu. Okay, so see, on this chart here, we have that depicted. See, you have Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the 70 elders that she's going to be reading about. Go ahead. And they saw the God of Israel. Okay, so what they're, so here you have them on a plateau of the mountain, and they're seeing... They're having a vision. They're seeing the God of Israel, right? Or this Elohistic, or Elohim, this, this is what they're seeing, right? Go ahead. 
And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. Right. And as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. Mm -hmm. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw God and did eat and drink. Okay, and so what they're seeing is an image that kind of looks like, that looks like a man, right? And so... This goes back to how are we made in the image and likeness of our creator, right? Because he said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. And so this is how you made in the image and likeness of your creator. Okay, but they're talking about this form here. And Elohim is a title, but this is the title that Yahweh chose for himself, right? And so this is the word. So the, when you have a word, a word what? Speaks, right? And he's called the word because he spoke to the um, prophets, right? And so when you look at Jeremiah, you see, and the word of Yahweh came to Jeremiah saying, you look at Isaiah, the word of, Je of Yahweh came to Isaiah saying, right? And so what you had back there <coughs> in the prophet was this word appearing unto them and giving them instructions or things for them to do, right? And so this word spoke to them. And so this is why Elohim is called the word or son. And when it says son, that's just in a lesser degree than Yahweh the father, right? And so... And so, because when you go to John 1 and 1, and it says, in the beginning was the word, if you interject Bible in that, it's not going to even make sense. So, in the beginning was the Bible. The Bible was with God, and God, the Bible was God. Does that make any sense? Because the Bible didn't make anything. Because it goes on to say that all things were made by the word, right? Yes. And there wasn't anything made that was made that, you know what I mean. Yes. <laughs> you know, so the Bible didn't make anything. And so, see, it's our understanding of what's going on that has to change. And so, you can understand your creator by knowing what's proper and what's right. Because they're talking about the word, this word, not the words that's in the Bible. Right. Okay. And so, let's go to, um, is it Luke? Mm -hmm. 20? Oh, like 24 and 25? No. No? Um, no, I mean John, I'm sorry. John, oh. 523? No. I can come in my father's name. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's 543. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. You, no. Okay. Um, John 5 and 43. Yes. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. Okay, so Lisa is reading from the King James Version of the Bible. Now, we use the King James Version, we use the Holy Name Version. The Holy Name Version of the Bible was written by an Italian Jew, A.B. Trainer, who just placed the true and original names back into the Bible. Mm -hmm. Right? That's all, that's the only difference. Now, some wording is different because, obviously, when people write something or publish something, they like to interject their own concepts and opinions about things, right? And so you do have some variations in the wording from the King James Version to the Holy Name Version. But King James Version of the Bible, if you're reading that, it should be in red, right? Yep. And I was always taught that whenever you see something in red, that means that that's Jesus talking, right? And so here it says, I come in my Father's name, you receive me not. Let another come in his own name, him you will receive. Now see, that can't be Jesus, because for the most part, the whole world has received the name of Jesus, right? Even those that don't really believe have just still received the name of Jesus, right? And so it has to be Yahshua. Yahshua is the name of the Savior. Um, Pam, get for me um, Matthew 1 and 26. 
And so see, we all come in our Father's name. When a child is born, as um, Karen brought out last time, when a child is born, you automatically have your last name, right? They automatically know what the last name is going to be. So actually your last name is your first name. Right? Because that's the name of the family. Now, for those women that are not married, they still, the baby still comes in the father's name. It's just maybe the grandfather. Right? And so it's still a father that the name, the child's name is coming in. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. What do I have? Okay, Matthew 1 and 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. No, you can switch over. And thou shalt call his name Yahshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. Okay, and so when, when Yahshua was born to the Virgin Mary, right? And so you had an angel that appeared unto them and told them what they were going to name that child. See, they did not have the liberty to name their own child. Because... I mean, you find out that it really wasn't their child, but the angel came to them and told them what to name that child. Why? Because he's going to save his people from their sins. See, Yahshua comes in his father's name. You have Yah, Shua. You have Yah here. You have Yah here. Yah, Y-A-H, is the masculine portion of the name Yahweh. Way, W-E-H, is the feminine portion. And so, see, Yahweh is male and female right within himself. I mean, we all are, right? Yeah. We all are male and female right within ourselves. It's just what is more dominant yeah. in you. You know, have you ever seen a woman that had a mustache? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? You've seen a man have feminine features. Mm -hmm. So we are male and female right within ourselves, going back to how we're made in the likeness and image of our Creator. And so Yahshua comes in his Father's name. You have Yah. And Shua, Shua in Hebrew means salvation. So see, his mission is right there within his name. He has a name above every name. Get um, Acts 4. 4 and 12, yeah. Acts 4 and 12. Well, might want to pick it up. Well, neither is there salvation. Okay, let me just set it up for a little bit. Okay, so in Acts here, you have Peter and John who are filled with the Holy Spirit. They come upon this temple called Beautiful, where you have the that day's um, religious rulers that would go to the temple, right? And so every day at this temple you have a you had a man who was slain from birth he would be sitting at the temple's gate and he would be begging for money right and so when peter and john goes there peter and john are disciples of yahshua right and so they are filled with the holy spirit and so when they go to the temple and they see this man and he's begging for money they tell him look silver and gold we have not but by the name of Yahshua the Messiah, rise up and walk, mm -hmm. right? And so when the priests and the leaders see this lame man walking, they're marveled. They're wondering, how is he able to walk? Because they did not have the power to heal him, right? And so when they gather, they gather Peter and John and they put him, you know, they circle him mm -hmm. and they say, mm -hmm. By what power or by what name have you done this? Okay, go ahead and pick that up. Okay, we're in Acts 4 and 7 then. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? All right, so they realize that there's power within the name. And so see, you know, the whole world has accepted Jesus Christ. Jesus is not the Savior. Jesus cannot offer salvation. See, Yahshua is salvation, right? That means Yahweh is salvation because it's like a conjunction. Yahweh 
is salvation. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, finish that. Um, um, eight. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, Ghost, said unto them, you rulers of the people and elders of Israel, mm -hmm. if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Yahshua the Messiah of Nazareth, mm -hmm. whom you crucified, whom Yahweh raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Mm -hmm. This is 12. Neither yeah. is there salvation in any other. Okay, so they're declaring there's no salvation in any other name. Go ahead. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby, man, whereby we must be saved. Right. And so, see, when we say that you can only be saved in the name of Yahshua, you know, someone may say, well, I don't like you saying you can only be saved in the name of Yahshua. My point to that is, whoever you think your Savior is, whatever name you use, just know that that name is wrong. The name is actually Yahshua. And so, see, that's why we can say you can only be saved in the name of Yahshua. Right? Because if you say, well, Jesus is my Savior, we're not taking your Savior away. We're just giving you the correct name to call your Savior. Mm -hmm. Right? Because, see, people want to say, oh, he knows who I'm talking about. That's not the point that he knows who you're talking about. Do you know who you're talking about? Right. See, that's the point. Because, see, <sighs> salvation is based on knowing. Right? Because when Yahshua in John the 17th chapter, when Yahshua declares himself as salvation, he say, you have to know mm -hmm. that they might know. See, it's based on the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Right? And, Yah and Yahweh talks about in, um, I don't know what scripture that is, but he talks about my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Right? And so, see, when you have no knowledge of your Creator, then you fall prey to anything. Because, see, someone can come to you and say, no, it should be this way. No, it should be that way. But, see, when you have the knowledge and understanding of your Creator as He really is and actually exists, no one can tell you anything. Because, see, you know for yourself. That's why we tell you and encourage you to check it out. See, don't believe me just because I said, you go and you... It's so easy. Look at her phone. She's looking up scriptures yeah. right on her phone. Mm -hmm. Now, 25 years ago, you couldn't do that. No. And see, I have to keep reminding my daughter that 25 years ago, this didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It didn't exist. Yeah. The World Wide Web didn't exist. And so, see, we had to do it the hard way, right? We had to go to the physical library. But see, now you have the library right at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. So you have no excuse for not to check it out, other than you just don't want to. But we encourage you to check it out. Go back in and make sure his name is Joshua. Make sure the name is Yahweh, right? Because guess what? It's in there. It's probably in the Bible you have at your house. You know, the big Bible that your grandmother had, the big, nice, beautiful Bible that, well, I know in the black household, we had the big, nice, beautiful Bible. I don't know if everybody has that. You know, it could be a, it could be a cultural thing. I don't know. But, you know, you probably have it somewhere in your house. Encyclopedia. You know, look it up and check it out for yourself because it is important. A name is important. Just like your name is important to you, the Creator's name is important to Him, right? And that's, you know, it's all based on knowing. And so what you want to know is you want to know the truth. You don't want to keep following after someone because somebody said it. You want to know the truth about your Creator. And see, that's what we're here to give you, the truth. Because we have nothing to gain. I mean, we have new members to gain. But, you know, we're not trying to give you what you want to hear. See, out in the church, you was used to paying Jesus for your salvation. See, there's no plate being passed around here. 
right? We didn't ask you for your money. All you have to do is pay attention. We don't need your money. Because there's not enough money that you can pay for salvation. Right? He's saying, freely give it. Right? And so it's free. Salvation is free. But it's based on to know. You have to know something about your creator. As he really is and actually exists. Because, you know, we all will have to become accountable at some point. And not realize, not based on some man. Because, see, I can't save you. I'm not the savior. I can't save you. I can only give you what the creator has given to me. As far as knowledge to help you understand. But I can't save you. I can't save myself. So Jesus cannot save you. Jesus has to go to Yahshua to be saved. If I can put it that way. You understand? So this is the name of your Savior. We're not saying that there's no Savior. Yeah, we're just giving you the true and correct name of the Savior. So you know what to call. Right? Because it is important. Mm -hmm. It's important because our salvation is at stake. Mm -hmm. And so just like it says... Let's just read um, John 17, <coughs> 17 and 3, just real quick. John 17 and 3, and this is life eternal. Okay, so he's talking about himself. He's saying this is life eternal. And see, like, like Karen said, we didn't know the difference between this and that. He's saying this is life eternal. Go ahead. That they might know thee, the only true Elohim, or God, and Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. Right. And it's based on to know. And with that, I'll say hallelujah. Thank you for the time. So the next speaker will be the Dean of the Tampa Branch, Dr. Joe Turner. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Hello. I thoroughly in enjoyed the... Uh, the remarks of the first speaker and I would just like to kind of continue on okay can you hear me now okay yeah um, so she mentioned uh, knowledge okay uh, give for me uh, scripture she wanted. it's uh, Hosea the fourth chapter read the first verse and then skip down to the sixth verse okay now um, You know, she, she mentioned the phone, and um, you know the the thing is about about the internet is no matter what your opinion is, you could find that someplace on the internet. Okay, when you look for something, you should look for a reputable resource. Okay, because uh, there are people out here that would tell you not to get for example, the vaccine for COVID-19. And, um, you know, uh, 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 my wife got in a conversation with someone, uh, a client of hers, about the vaccine. And um, basically asked her, well, you know, why do you think you should get that? And she said, well, I got it because my husband is an immunologist with a PhD, okay, and he got it. <laughs> Okay, now, she, that's me. Okay, I'm an immunologist. That's what I do for a living. All right? That's, uh, so, you know, people say, oh, this is a new, different technology. No, it's not. I've been using these technologies for 20 to 30 years. Okay? They may be new to you. All right? But that doesn't mean they're new. And it definitely doesn't mean that they're not effective. Now that's a physical example, okay? Now if you go out and you look up these names of Yahweh and Yahshua, you're gonna find, if you look in a reputable source, see, 
encyclopedias, various dictionaries. You see, you know, if you go to Bob's website, okay, <laughs> Bob the Barbarian's website, okay, or something stupid like that, okay, you're going to find, oh, well, no, uh, let's see, this thing is 400 years old. Do the math. When was the Messiah around? 2,000 years ago. Okay. 400 versus 2,000, that's not even close. Okay. That's, that's not like uh, hitting a rim shot. Oh, it went off the rim. No, that's, that's not even playing on the court. Okay. This is not the truth. Now, see, you can call him Jesus if you want. You see? But if the truth is important to you, you see, my response, when I heard this name Yahshua, I was blown away. I was just like, wow. <clears throat> you know, that is so cool. You know, and, you know, you ask people, right? You ask anybody out here, do you want to know the truth? <laughs> they all say, I've never found anybody who says, no, I don't want to know the truth. Okay? Now I remember, when I was in college, Okay, I would talk to people about class. Okay, I dragged thousands of people down to class. Okay, M Miguel is, is I, I was telling Pam how he's, he reminded, now he, he's a little older than I was when I was in college, but he, he talks to people about class all the time. Now, like I said, I'm a PhD immunologist. These people are too educated to listen to me. Okay, Th they, they think they know. When you think you know, you're not going to listen to anybody else. Okay, so, you see, you want to get, see, you ask someone, do you want to know the truth? And then when you tell them about it, okay, and this happened to me one time. Yeah. You know, uh, I got in this conversation with someone, okay, uh, she was a friend of mine from when I was in college, and she said to me that she really wants to know the truth. I mean, just out of the blue, she said this. I hadn't even told her anything about class. So I'm like, wow, Yahweh, I'm going to tell her about it. <laughs> so I spent two hours, maybe with a longer, telling her about the names and, and what I'm going to get into as far as how science and the Bible agree, okay? And after I got all done, she said to me, if that's the truth, I don't want to know. <laughs> People don't want to know the truth. They want, they want to know their truth. Okay? Now, I'm not telling you my truth. I'm telling you, and what Cynthia did, is she told you Yahweh's truth. Your minister knows this name Yahweh, and he knows this name Yahshua, and he knows this divine title Elohim. They are taught these things in their seminary school. Okay? They know these things. And they're not telling you. And you ask them, because I have, why don't you, if you know these names, why don't you tell the people? And they'll say stuff like, people aren't ready for it yet. Okay? Do you, are, are you going to like jump out the window screaming? Okay? Are you not ready for it? Okay? Or you don't, it doesn't matter what you call him. Really? Show me one scripture. Just one. In the Bible, where it says, where Yahweh says, it doesn't matter what you call me. You see? <laughs> and I can show you a, a hundred, at least, where he says, this is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. Now, we're generations from, the, from that time. So these names are important to Yahweh. All right? doesn't matter if they're important to me. It doesn't matter if they're important to Amber or Lisa or anybody else in the room. Are they important to your Creator? They are. And He says so throughout the, th throughout the Bible. Okay, it's, it's just, it's, number one, it's the truth. And it's the truth that He wants to be called by these names. Not by Lord, okay, which is a title that means loaf keeper. Okay, not by God, you see, which is a Germanic title for any deity. Okay, you see, in, in, the, in the scriptures, when you read a King James Bible, why does it say in some places, the Lord God? I never stop to ask that question. 
The reason why is they took out the true names. Wherever it says the Lord God, it originally said Yahweh Elohim. Now, the first speaker just got done explaining to you that Yahweh appeared in a visionary form known as the Word or known as Yahweh Elohim. So wherever in your King James Bible where it says the Lord God, that's giving you some information. That's telling you that Yahweh himself appeared to them in a visionary shape and form. Let's let, uh, hold that, Hosea, mm -hmm. and get for me uh, Exodus 25, okay, where Yahweh appeared, 8 and 9, I think it is. Okay. 24. 24, 9 and 10. 9 and 10, yeah. okay. Exodus 24, 9 and 10. Uh -huh. Then went up Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu. The same scenario that, she, that, that Cynthia was talking about. Go ahead. And 70 of the elders of Israel. Okay. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. They the saw Israel. the Elohim of Israel. They saw Elohim. Mm -hmm. Okay, now go ahead. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. He had feet. And as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. Now, he had a body, but it was a heavenly body, a ghost-like body, if I can put it that way. Okay, so he had feet, he had a body. Go ahead. 11, and upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. He had hands, feet, and a body. And this was Yahweh Elohim, a visionary shape and form of a man that appeared to them. Now give me uh, um, Genesis 6, uh, 15 and 1. Genesis 15 and 1. Uh -huh. After these things, the word of Yahweh came unto Abram in a vision, saying... So the word of Yahweh appeared to Abram in a vision, just like he appeared to Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel. And you'll find it'll say that Yahweh Elohim appeared to Samuel, Yahweh Elohim, or the Word appeared to, you see, Isaiah, the Word appeared, see, Yahweh Elohim, and his, the title, that's his proper name, and it's a description of what they were looking at. It was this visionary shape and form of a man, and that's how he communicated up into the time of the Messiah. Okay? And that's when things changed. Alright? And they changed in a very significant way. Alright? Now, I want to move on. So we got charts here, okay, and, and Cynthia po pointed this out. We got charts with, okay, we got cells and we got atoms and stuff like that. And, and we got this chart here, it says, man made in the image of Elohim, okay? And, you, and, and people read this because it's in Genesis that Yahweh made Adam in his image and likeness. Mm -hmm. And that man is made in the image and likeness of Yahweh, mm -hmm. okay? Now, you take someone like, like Lawrence back there, He's like six foot eight, okay? All right. Pam, go over and stand next to, uh, to, to Lawrence. Lawrence, would you please stand up for a moment? Okay, I'm, I'm trying to pick people that are like very different in appearance, okay? <laughs> now, which one is made in the image and likeness of Yahweh? Okay? Now the answer is, is both of them. If you understand the difference between a principle and a manifestation. Okay? Now, see, this is what I got when, when, when I was, in, when I was uh, attending uh, the Baptist church growing up. Is I was told, number one, you couldn't know anything about God until you died. Okay? And I never stopped to ask the question, well, wouldn't that be too late? <laughs> yeah. I mean, what are we doing here now? Right. Why we're, see, people always want to know, okay, uh, number one, everybody wants to know the truth, right? Okay. And the other thing they want to know is, what is my purpose? Mm -hmm. Why am I here? Okay, right? People want to know that. Why was I born? Okay, especially when things are bad, you'll say something like, why was I ever born? <laughs> you know? We can tell you, your purpose for being here is to learn about Yahweh. 
and that when you die, you're going to go on in ages to come to learn about him. And that's in your scriptures. Okay? Now, so people will say that science and the Bible don't agree. That's not true. Science and the Bible agree exactly. Okay? And, and I'm going to use this example of how you're made in the image and likeness of your creator. All right? Now, I will say this. Science and religion don't agree. Okay? But science and the Bible agree. All right? Now, uh, 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 you got that scripture in Hosea? Mm -hmm. Okay, get that for me first, please. Hosea. And, and also, I want Isaiah 33, um, uh, uh, 33 and 6, I think it is. And uh, 1 Thessalonians, uh, the fifth chapter. So we're in Hosea, the fourth chapter, verses 1, and then skip down to 6. Right. Hosea 4.1. Hear the word of Yahweh, uh -huh. you children of Israel. Mm -hmm. For Yahweh has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, mm -hmm. because there is no truth nor mercy, nor knowledge of Yahweh in the land. Now he's mad at these people because there's no truth, no mercy, and no knowledge of Yahweh in the land. You see, the way I was taught was I just had to have faith. Now, when they said faith, there was something implied in that. And that was blind faith. That's what they meant. You just got to work up on it and believe. Now, how well does that work for you from a natural standpoint? You see, if I had never met this woman before, and, and, and I said, here, would you hold on to my wallet and my, uh, my credit cards? Now, I'd be a fool to do that, wouldn't I? You see? See? Now, if... if now, I do know her, mm -hmm. and she's my friend. I would have no problem doing that. You see? Now, that is, see, people want to have blind faith. I want to know Yahweh. I want to be able to trust in Him because I know things about Him. That's, that's faith there. Mm -hmm. You see? Having experience and having a friend and having interactions, you see, and when you, especially if, so, I've known you since you were a teenager, you see? And she's known me yeah. that long, too. Yeah. We have a friendship that spans decades. Mm -hmm. I know her. I, and, and because I know her, I can trust her. Mm -hmm. Okay? And vice versa, I hope. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Maybe she knows me and can't trust me. Okay? <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't trust Joel, okay? I, I've been around him for decades, right? You know? <laughs> but see, if you got to have some knowledge. Yes. And Yahweh had a controversy that there was no knowledge of him in the land. Right. Okay, go ahead. Read verse 6. Down to 4 and 6 in Hosea. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Destroyed. Okay. Now, if you take your, your cell phone and you drop it, and it gets a little damage on it, you feel bad, right? But if you drop it and it gets destroyed, okay, that's pretty final, all right? That's pretty severe, all right? So here he says, my people are destroyed, spiritually so, mm -hmm. because of a lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Because... Thou hast rejected knowledge. Now, it's not that he didn't provide them some knowledge. Mm -hmm. You see, you're being provided with some knowledge here. Mm -hmm. All right? But, go ahead. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. They rejected it. Go I ahead. I will also reject thee. Mm -hmm. That thou shalt be no priest to me. Okay. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of Yahweh, mm -hmm. I will also forget thy children. Wow. That's pretty severe. You don't want knowledge? He's going to forget you and your kids. Okay? <laughs> that was, that's, that's rough. Okay? Now, people don't like that. They want God to be warm and fuzzy. All right? Well, I want to know the truth. And you see, Yahweh does have great love. Don't, don't get me wrong about that. But these people rejected him and rejected knowledge of him. Okay? And you know what they rejected of also? You'll find that they, they rejected that name of Yahweh and called him Baal. B-A-A-L. And that's in Jeremiah. All right, Jeremiah is some definitely doom and gloom kind of prophet, okay? And, and, and they rejected him, you see, 
for, for Baal. Now, this is a strange thing. You look up the word Baal. You know what the word Baal means? What does it mean? It means Lord. They rejected Yahweh for the name Baal. Now, what have people done today? They've rejected the name Yahweh for Lord. See, you've heard the, the saying, history repeats itself. Okay, it does, you see. And, and that's the principle, you see. Now, uh, you have those other scriptures? Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21, I think it was. Isaiah 33 and 6. Isaiah 33 and 6, go ahead. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and the strength of salvation. Now, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and the strength of salvation. Okay? Now, wisdom and knowledge of what? If, if you read a book on nuclear physics, is, is that going to give you, you see, stability? Okay. How about, how about uh, calculus? Okay? See, I took calculus. I hated it. I don't remember anything about it. It seemed like the biggest waste of time. I've never used it my entire life. Okay? But they made me take it. All right? No good to me at all. You see? Wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh is your stability. You see, is the stability of your times. That's the wisdom and knowledge. That's your stability of times. And that's the strength of salvation. You see, that's, that, that's the strength, you see, that we have. Okay, is that wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh. Now you got uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians? Yeah, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21. Uh -huh. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Now, how many times... Have you heard, you see, and I don't want to just get down on Christians. We're, we're, we're equal opportunity down here. We're down on all religions, not the people, but because they don't have the truth. I don't care if you're a Buddhist. I don't care if you're a Christian. I don't care if you're a Muslim. You see, we don't discriminate. Okay? And every one of us walked into this room just as ignorant as the day is long. You see, now read that again for me, please. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 uh -huh. Prove all things. Now, prove all things. Go ahead. Hold fast that which is good. And hold fast that which is good. See, we want to prove things to your satisfaction. And, and if you're not satisfied, keep coming down here. We'll work, we'll work on it. We got, we, I'll tell you, we got a lifetime worth of knowledge and understanding to, to give you see, mm -hmm. out. And that goes for people that have been around for a while, too. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, what I want to do is I want to show you how science and the Bible agree. Now, back here at the time of Moses, see, it all starts really with Moses. All right? Moses wrote the book of Genesis. He received it in a vision up here in the mountain. Okay? And then he, you see, also wrote the book, book of Exodus. Okay? And, and, well, there's a story to that. But anyways, so back here at Moses' time, Moses alone was called up into this mountain where she was reading in the 25th chapter of, of Exodus. You see, that Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu were called up to this mountain, but Moses alone was called up to the top of this mountain. And when he was up there, you see, he saw a vision of the Genesis. So when Moses says, in the beginning, in Genesis, like you were talking, okay, he's talking about in the beginning of the vision that he had. When John is talking about the, in the beginning, in John 1 and 1, he's talking about the actual beginning of the creation of, uh, of Yahweh, okay, of, of the heavens and the earth, okay, through Yahweh. So Moses comes up here. And Moses, you see, as we, we just read, saw Yahweh Elohim, uh, a, a visionary shape and form of a man with hands, feet, and the body, okay? And he appeared to, to Yahweh. And, yeah, and Yahweh Elohim transformed into this tabernacle pattern, okay? And then back into uh, this visionary shape and form, showing that this tabernacle pattern, which is described in extreme detail, okay, in, in like, I think, 30-something chapters in the book of Exodus, all right, um, that this tabernacle is an example of Yahweh. Now, you go all the way to John the Revelator, all right, and the first thing he sees is he sees Yahweh Elohim. And then he sees 
this tabernacle overlaid over Yahweh Elohim. You read Revelation, the first chapter. It's in there. So, from start to ending, you see, Yahweh used this tabernacle to represent himself. Now, what happened was, is Moses was told to come down into the wilderness of Sinai, where the children of Israel were camped, and they were to construct this tabernacle. Now, the children of Israel were master builders down here in Egypt. So you'd think, oh, well, they probably have some good ideas. See, see, see look, I, I have a boss who, who um, he'll, he'll like throw out some ideas to me and he goes, flesh them out for me, Joel. <laughs> and my first thought is, I can't wait till I retire. <laughs> you see? <laughs> you know? That's not what Yahweh did. <laughs> Yahweh gave them a specific pattern, mm -hmm. all right? And that the, 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 the individuals that made the things in this tabernacle, Yahweh put his spirit right inside them. Their names were Aeoliab and Bezalel. And so when they made the stuff in this tabernacle, they didn't have any theories, concepts, and opinions, you see, when they were making this candlestick. Well, let's... let's you know, seven's good, but I kind of like the number eight, okay? Or wait, wait, 13, that's my lucky number, all right? Now, now, they had no opinions involved here. And then, once all the, 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 the see, the, this was a structure. It was like a tent. It had like a, a fence around it, okay? And, and, and this, this was covered over with a tent-like structure, all right? And there were vessels here of brass and gold, and, 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 and there, there was a high priest that ministered in here, and, and even the garments that he he wore were specifically designed by Yahweh. Mm -hmm. All right, and you can work with every single part of this tabernacle and show how that Yahshua came in and he fulfilled those things. Okay, he fulfilled all the things that were written back here in the the the, the so-called Old Testament, including every single part of this tabernacle. Now. I'm going to just throw this out to you and then I'm going to show you some evidence for, you, for, for it. This pattern that Moses was shown back here is the pattern of the universe. And that everything in this creation is made and operates according to a tabernacle pattern that was given to a shepherd okay, 4,000 years ago. Crazy, huh? Alright, well let me show you some proof for the thing. Okay, let me take you. Because man is made in the image and likeness of Yahweh. This is an example of the image and likeness of Yahweh. Now, I'm going to use principles in this tabernacle. And I'll show you how... See, see I, I, you don't have like, you know... Uh, you know, you don't have like a physical heart in here and guts and stuff like that, all right? But there are principles in this tabernacle, all right? Let me give you an example. There were three parts to the tabernacle. The court roundabout holy place, most holy place. How many parts are there to your body? Three parts. You have a head, you have your chest or your thoracic cavity, and you have your abdominal cavity. One, two, three, one band. One, two, three, one tabernacle. Now, everything goes according to this tabernacle, right? So how many parts are there to an atom? You have neutrons, protons, and electrons. Only those three. You know, you, you don't have other particles to make up that, that atom, okay? The only difference between atoms is that, you see, oxygen might have eight protons, neutrons, and electrons. Carbon may have six protons, neutrons, and electrons. But all atoms have, you see, those particles. Now, I know hydrogen is an exception, and there's principles behind that. But, you see, it, it still fits tabernacle. Okay, and, and the, the, see, but, but that's bringing it down the line. All right, now take a cell. You have a, 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 a cytoplasm or a cell body, you have a nucleus, and you have a nucleolus. Three major compartments to the cell. Okay, so you, t you take this man, and he's got these three compartments. Now, surrounding this tabernacle, you had two layers of linen surrounding your tabernacle. Now, isn't it funny that Peter referred to his body as a tabernacle? Mm -hmm. Okay, you'll read that. I think it's in the book of Peter. Alright? That he said that I must take off this now my tabernacle. 
all right? You see, and, and, and people, people will say stuff like, oh, your body is a temple. Where did they get that? From the scriptures, okay? You see, th this is the temple of Yahweh. Now, two layers of linen, how many layers of skin you have? Two. The dermis and the epidermis. All right? Now, going into the core roundabout, you have an altar. It has four sides. It had four points of blood and had a grating system in the center. Sacrifices were offered up because people would sin. And this would die so that they wouldn't die for their sins. It, this lamb or whatever was offered up here died in their place. All right? Now, this correlates to your intestines. Four sides, right? Your large intestines, you have an ascending, transverse, descending, sigmoid colon. Four sides. Four points of blood on each of the corners. You have four major arteries that feed this large intestines. Okay, a grating system in the center. So you have your small intestines, which go back and forth and form, as it were, a network or a grating system in the center. Okay, now the sacrifice was offered up here. So whatever you eat dies so that you could live. This died so that they wouldn't die for their sins. Okay, uh, uh, let's see. What did I have for dinner last night? Salmon. Okay. Was, was it alive? No. Is it still like inside my stomach jumping around? Okay. It died so that I could live. You see, pork chops, whatever you like. Okay. And vegetables, they offered up, did you know they offered up vegetables and stuff? They also offered up oils and stuff like that. See, I love things cooked in olive oil myself. Okay, so it died so that they could live. Now, if you say, "Well, I'm not gonna, I, I'm, 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 not, I'm not gonna, nothing's gonna die for me," well, then you'll die. Okay, <laughs> so something's gonna die. All right. Now, it forms like a, a network here, and th and this was a fire. Okay, the majority of digestion in your body occurs in the small intestines, and 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 it generates a great deal of heat. Okay, because of the, the enzymatic breakdown of that food. Okay, now, going from, from, from that, you have a labor of water. It's rounded configuration. Um, the sacrifice was washed in that, so you have a principle of a cleansing. Okay, uh, the, the, the dirty waters were drained down to a compartment beneath and out of a spigot system. Now, this was made of highly polished brass. So we have the water here in blue, but it wouldn't look that way. It would look yellow in appearance. All right. Now this correlates to your kidneys. Your kidneys, when placed together, are around a configuration. All right. You have a cleansing here. What do the kidneys do? They cleanse your blood. Now, where I work, we use uh, uh, um, PET scans. And PET scans tells you the amount of energy that something uses. Okay, really the amount of glucose. All right. And when when we do a PET scan of a patient okay the brain uses a lot of a lot of energy so it lights up all right your heart really really lights up okay now the other thing that lights up is your kidneys because your kidneys work really really hard because if your blood isn't clean you will die mm -hmm. Right? People that lose kidneys, okay, have, have kidney disease and, and so on. You see, they have to go into dialysis and stuff like that. But it, it takes a tremendous amount of energy. And the filtration system, by the way, if, if some, well, maybe I'll work with it sometime, it's just death, burial, resurrection. Death, burial, resurrection. Okay, in, in principle. All right. So, you see, your, your blood is cleansed. Your entire blood Okay, all 12 pints of you, all right, or whatever, how many, I'm sure Pam has a few, few less, maybe Lawrence has a few more, but about 12 pints, okay, all of that is cleansed 70 times every day. That takes a tremendous amount of energy for that filtration to occur, okay, so you see, 
So you have a cleansing here, and you have an incredible amount of cleansing going on here. That's my point. All right. Now, the dirty water is drained down into a compartment beneath and out of a spigot system. So those dirty waters drain into the ureters, down into the bladder, and then out of the urethra. Okay, same overall structure. Now you say, well, you have to place them together to get rounded configuration. Well, if you go over here, now I said everything goes according to the pattern. Didn't they offer up a sacrifice down here? Mm -hmm. Got a sacrifice offered up here and four points of blood. They offered up a sacrifice down here and they put four points of blood around the door. And that kept the dead, that, see that lamb died so that they could live, is that right? So those four points of blood, you see, kept that death angel away, all right? Now, so afterwards they came up and they went through the parted waters of the Red Sea. Now it says that they came through harnessed. And the word harnessed means five abreast. Mm -hmm. All right? So they went through the same uh, uh, waters, but they did it five abreast. So your kidneys in your body, okay, are five centimeters apart. See, even the dimensions go according to the pattern. All right? Now, you also have a cup of holy anointing oil, which it, it was poured over the priest to quicken his spirit so that he would minister flawlessly. And by the way, this was a life or death situation because there was a couple of priests who thought they'd do it their way, okay, named Aeoliab and Bezalel. And they took and they offered up strange fire unto Yahweh. And you know what Yahweh did to him? He dropped him. Okay, and when I say dropped him, I mean he killed them for being disobedient. So that holy anointing oil was essential. All right. Now, this correlates to your adrenal glands. This is in a cup of holy anointing oil. The adrenal glands are described as being cupped over the top of your kidneys. All right. This is a life or death situation. See, uh, adrenaline is called a fight or flight hormone. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, you, you, you show up at your friend's house, okay, and you open the gate and you walk into the yard and they didn't tell you, but they, they bought a 150-pound Rottweiler named Satan, all right? And you see that dog, okay, <laughs> and, you, and you get out of that yard and you think, wow, I didn't think I could run that fast. You can't, all right? Adrenaline helped you out, all right? You see? It, it could have been a life or death situation. You see, you, you hit that brake when that child runs in front of the car, you see, and then you feel shaky. Mm -hmm. That shaking is because of that adrenaline, you see, coursing through your blood, okay? So this is a, you see, a life or death situation. This is that fight or flight hormone. Now, going into the holy place, you have a blue, purple, and scarlet veil. And now this is on the outside. This is, this is the structure, and this is kind of out of doors, although it had a fence around it, okay? Now, so this, this was a, a, a blue, a purple, and a scarlet or bright red veil. All right? And it completely covered this. We have it opened here so you can see what's inside. But it was, you, see, you can see a depiction of it right here. All right? Here's the, the holy place and the most holy place. And here's that veil. All right? And here's that court roundabout we just described. Now, it separates here. And you see, and being on that tent, that, that veil would blow with the wind. All right. Now this correlates to your diaphragm. Your diaphragm completely separates your, uh, your chest from your abdominal cavity, except for right in the center. Okay? And in the center there you have your esophagus and you have some major arteries. And this is called a portal. This completely separated, except for in the center it had a door. Guess what the word portal means? door. So you got a door here, you got a door here. Now this is blue, purple, and scarlet, so your diaphragm is a large sheet of muscle. It is pri primarily the way that you breathe. And you breathe all the time, right? You, you don't take a break. Well, I think I'm going to rest my diaphragm for a couple hours, all right? Uh, that's not going to work out for you. That'll just tell you flat out. Okay. I, I'm almost out of time. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so, so you have large arteries, large veins, okay? And then the mixing of the, the, the arteries, which are red, and the veins, which, have, which are blue, okay? They're designated that way, and because of the, basically the amount of oxygen they have, all right? You have a purple. So you have a blue, purple, and scarlet veil, and doesn't it blow with your wind? Okay, have you ever gotten hit right here? 
in the, it's called the solar plexus. Mm. Plexus is a, is, a, is, is a bunch of nerves. And these nerves control your diaphragm, okay? And, and, and if you get hit there, I remember playing football, I got hit right in the diaphragm. And I was laying on the ground, gasping for air, okay? Because, you see, and, and what, do they, what do they say? You got the wind. wind knocked out of you. So this would blow with the wind, this blows with the wind. Now here you have a lampstand with seven branches, three paired wooden stood alone. So you go into your, 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 your uh, gray day aortic arch, okay? You have seven branches here, seven branches. Three paired, one stood alone, three paired, one stood alone, okay? This gave light to the tabernacle. This gives light or life to your body. Also, did you know the inside of that artery is called a lumen, which means light, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, you have a table of shoe bread here, two gold crowns, 12 loaves of bread, okay? This core, and it was sustenance to the priest. This correlates to your heart. Did you know that the, 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 heart, the chambers of the heart are, are called the tables of the heart? Why would they call it a table? See, this is where the food's prepared. This is where it's distributed, or this is the table that you eat from. 12 loaves of bread, 12 pints of blood in an average human being. Two gold crowns, two coronary arteries around the heart. Coronary means crowns. Okay, altar of incense here. A prayer was offered up here. It had an incense with four main ingredients. This correlates to your lungs. Four main ingredients to this incense. How many ingredients are there in air? Four main ingredients, okay. Four points of blood on four horns. You have on top of your lungs what are called cornu. And there's four cornu. So you have four horns here. You have four cornu, which means horns here, okay. Now, the priest would offer up a prayer unto Yahweh, all right. Now, it says in, in Psalms, uh, uh, the, actually the very last verse of Psalms, 115 verse 6, it says, let everything that hath breath praise Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So, you see, does that, does, that, does, that, does that dog breathe Yahweh? So you see, we, we have animal examples in here, okay? He breathes the name Yahweh. You breathe that name Yahweh. You see, you, and now, that name Yahweh, written in Hebrew, is written Y-H-W-H. They don't have consonants. Four main ingredients. So there's four main ingredients to this incense. There's four main ingredients to that name Yahweh. Okay, now, going into the most holy place, you have another blue, purple, and scarlet veil. So your neck, you have large arteries, you have large veins, so you, that gives you the red and the blue, or the blue and the scarlet. And then you have the thyroid gland here, which secretes uh, a hormone made of iodine. See, all, if, if you were to scan the body, and I've had this done, okay, because I've worked with radioactive iodine, okay, if you scan the body, and you get exposed to iodine, it goes right there. And the word iodine, guess what it means? Purple. purple. See? Blue, purple, and scarlet veil. Blue, purple, and scarlet veil. Now here you had the, the Ark of the Covenant, okay, like from the movie. The two uh, archangels came up but didn't touch in the center. The, Yahweh appeared in a cloud, and you had two tables of stone with a Ten Commandment law. So you look at your brain, you have your hemispheres coming up, you see, like those wings of the archangels. And, and they didn't touch, so these are separated in the center by, by, that, by that septum, okay? That, that intermediate septum, okay? Now, this was gray and white, it was a cloud. Your brain is gray and white matter. There's no other organ like that in the body. Okay, so you have, and it looks like a cloud. It's convoluted and so on, you see. Now at the base of this, you have these two tables of stone with the Ten Commandment Law. And, and at the base of your brain, you have that pituitary gland. Two lobes, just like you had two tables. Ten hormones, ten laws. Okay, now, when they, this tabernacle was portable. The twelve tribes would pick up this tabernacle and follow the cloud. All right, so that's what they did down here in the wilderness. See, so you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve tribes. Now, so you have your arms and legs. Now, your arm has three parts, right? Everything it breaks down to threes: hand, lower arm, upper arm. Three, six. Your leg, you have your upper leg, your lower leg, and your foot. Nine, 
12. Your 12 tribes follow your cloud, just like they did for 40 years, they followed this cloud around in the wilderness. Okay, not even knowing, you see, I mean, did, did, did Moses, did he have a degree in anatomy and physiology? Okay, you see, can you just see this much, okay, that you are made in the image and likeness of your creator? according to this tabernacle pattern, which he used to represent himself back here at the time of Moses. Okay. Now, um, I hope you got something out of that. If you have questions, uh, please uh, see myself or, or, or see Cynthia with a C. Okay. Um, <laughs> when I think of Cynthia, well, I won't say. Okay. But uh, anyways... We got so much more to tell you. Mm -hmm. All the Bible stories going according to this pattern, everything. I want to get into cells, okay? Uh, it, it does everything. It, it, see, operates according to this pattern. And everything that the Messiah did was according to that pattern. And see, that can give you faith. When you see that something written thousands of years before, back here with Moses, and then when Yahshua comes in and does all those works according to that pattern, and how that your everyday life also goes according to that pattern, and history goes according to that pattern, that should give you some faith in Yahweh. You see? So, you want to know the truth or not? That's up to you. Okay? We got it, if you want it. So, thank you so much for the time. Amen. There in your announcement. Um, no, I'm sorry, I'm having it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't bring it? It's in the car. Okay. As it was said before, if you have any questions, just uh, address the speakers after class and after this, uh, really after the doxology. Mm -hmm. Okay, we hold classes on Sunday here. From 11 to 1, 6615 Sheldon Road, and we hold classes on Wednesday on Zoom from 7 to 9. May we all be, well, we all stand to be dismissed with the dark side you taking from the rest of the Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only I will tell him, I will say with you, Yahshua Messiah, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power for all time, now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.